Well, guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. Kind of. But not really. We're down in Tennessee today. Uh, well, I guess this entire month. I've been down here for about a month or so. I do work for deer. I travel. I am a traveling test engineer on combines, basically. So, you know, on combines, the only way to test them is to drive to where the crop is. Well, we're down in Tennessee where they have wheat. Well, I guess that's wheat stubble. Actually, that's barley stubble. Wheat stubble. And there's some canola down here as well. So we're down here testing in that, but obviously I can't show you guys really anything of that because that is confidential and I want to keep my job. But I would love to show you guys a little bit about, you know, the really the cropping practices down here. So down in Tennessee, I am in Western Tennessee where they, uh, they raise a lot of corn and soybeans, but they also raise double crops. And what double crops are is <clears throat> you, uh, you seed or plant something in September, October after you harvested corn, a normal corn crop, you seed wheat, barley, or canola and then it grows over for a month or so, goes dormant over winter, and then re kind of invigorates in the spring, and then you harvest it in like June or so. And that's what they did. This field was harvested a couple weeks ago. You harvest the wheat, you know, you can do wheat, barley, or canola, you do whatever you want with it, you sell it, you feed it, you do whatever, and then you plant what's called double crop beans afterwards. And you can kind of see, see how there's green coming up in there? Let's actually go take a look. So like I said, this field was harvested a couple weeks ago. It was planted like an hour. Actually, the comments weren't even done with this field and they were already bringing planters in. And you can kind of see, they just basically no-till right into the wheat, wheat stubble. They plant soybeans. So it's essentially a way to use your land more when you got $10 wheat and $16 beans. Why wouldn't you? And the wheat was yielding really good. I mean, it was, wasn't tr quite triple digit wheat yields down here, but it was some really good yields. But yeah, that's, this is not a practice that you see back home at all. The reason for that is really simple. We don't have a long enough growing season. These guys, they plant their corn, you know, April 1st. If they're not running by then, that is, uh, they're disappointed. Whereas back home, we're lucky to get any anhydrous in the ground April 1st. So they can, they have a good solid month ahead of us for growing season. So they mean they can start harvesting corn September 1. Well, we're October 1. Therefore, they can harvest that earlier, then get weed in a month earlier. And it just works out so much better. Because double crop beans are all, they're all dependent on really just summer. I mean, it, summer rain, summer heat, and everything. You got to get them in early so you can get them, a, get them a long enough growing season. And hopefully they can make anywhere from 20 to 60 bushel. But this was a wheat field that was harvested a week later than this barley field. This was planted, like I said, a week a week before. This is coming up. This stuff was just starting to emerge. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, wheat harvest going on right now that it, then is in turn getting turned into double crop soybeans. So yeah, let's all uh, let's see what else we get into. I'm gonna try and make a video while I'm down here. Not sure what all it's gonna be about, but I hope you enjoy. Well, it's not every day you see a mint looking 7088 just right in the middle of town. Wow, that thing is nice looking. Very sharp. Not sharp as ours, but very, very sharp. So I'm just driving down the road, minding my own business, and I see this unit. This is not something you see every day in the Midwest or Mid-South or wherever you want to call where I'm at. I'm actually in, uh, call you later, honey. Midwest or Mid-South or whatever you want to call it, but uh, it's a big bud, 525.50, five and a quarter. It's actually a really similar looking one that welkers have obviously not near in as good a shape as theirs but oh wow looks like he's pulling a scraper on john deere 15 12e Woo. now that is nice that is very nice again you don't see this at all in the midwest i'm just coming back from church and i uh see this thing on the side of the road and i'm like yep i gotta go take a look at it because like i said those things are cool very cool, very cheap, durable tractors. Not necessarily cheap, but very economical. I mean, they basically just take transmissions, engines from major manufacturers and put it into a simple chassis that just worked. And I believe this one was made in the 70s. I'll put the year right here when this one was made. I forget, but it was like 70s and 80s, somewhere around there. They were made out in Montana. You don't see them at all in the Midwest because you know, out in Montana, you needed these high horsepower, rugged, simple tractors to work on to pull big equipment. But around here, I mean, really didn't need these this big a tractor. You know, back when these were being built, we still only had, you know, 12 and 16 year old planters were the biggest ones that you needed. You know, we didn't have 70 foot tillage equipments like we do today. So do, would these work in today's market, especially in the Midwest? Yes, but they really don't right now because these tractors aren't being made anymore. They haven't been made for 20 plus years, maybe even 30 years. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Looks like a Detroit in here. Um, can't tell. 
I'm not very good at identifying motors. The exterior's seen better days, that's for sure, but uh, you don't buy these type of tractors for looks, unless you're amazing at fabricating like the Welkos are. Cool. Yeah, like I said before, it's just a simple, simple tractor. This one right here is pulling a scraper, dirt pan, whatever you want to call it. It's got quite a bit of hydraulics on there. Jeez. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hydraulic pumps or hydraulic valves. That's impressive. It's an articulated tractor just like our Steiger 400 is. It's probably got well north of 400 horsepower, 525, 50. I do not know what that stands for. Maybe it's 525 horsepower and I'm not even going to guess on the 50. Let's see what else we get into. Oh, yeah. Don't mind my dirty windshield and dirty car and trash bag can passenger seat. I don't know. I live out of this thing when I'm in the field, so it happens. And that is usually my trash can, which is usually pretty full. I'm impressed with myself. Cleaning up for the thousands of guests that will be uh, watching this video. Alrighty, guys, I'm back. So the thing about uh, Tennessee, the one thing that really surprised me, this, especially the part of Western Tennessee, is there's a lot of timber, a lot of timber. And like you see, there's a pasture ground right here, but it looks like that was timber at one point too. I'm guessing that all of this area of the country, minus obviously, well, I say all of it, but there's probably river, river bottoms and stuff that had no trees but i'm guessing a majority of this part of the country had timber on it at some point and had to be logged to be able to be farmed the reason why i say that is because the fields that you know i've been harvesting that i've seen being harvested planted whatever they're literally just nooks you know around the hilltops around the 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 good soil parts it looks like literally they were just logged and then turned into farm ground why i don't know but it's just that's just an interesting part of this area of the country i i had no clue that you know, Tennessee, I'm assuming Western Kentucky, all even going farther south in the Mississippi or so, it's just completely different than what we have back home where, yeah, we could log some of a, like, you know, clear cut some of our timber farms and tracks and whatnot, but for the most part, we weren't, we didn't have a lot of trees. It was all prairie grass and whatnot that was broke back in the 1800s or so. It wasn't like down here where it had to be logged to be farmed. And even if we would log some of our stuff, you know, we, we couldn't farm some of those slopes. It would A, be, it'd be negligent on the, uh, you know, basically we'd be losing soils because of erosion because it's so steep. But, you know, from another point, there's a lot of habitat for deer and everything that we just don't want to lose. So anyway, long and the short of it is, you know, Tennessee, it's just, it's very different than back home. Now that's a lot of timber that was logged. Now that would be, that would just be really neat to see. That would just be a knockdown thing to see. It would really trim my hedges. Seeing a lot of those drive by. I don't think Max or Bella would be able to pick up those sticks. They could try. Wouldn't work. Are you kidding me? It's June 26th. June 20th. No, June 20th. And this corn is tasseling right now. Like I'm in South Tennessee and this corn is tasseling. We have corn back home that's only eight, eight inches tall. This is unreal. And also, anybody else ever sketched out uh, driving behind one of these things? You know, final destination, anybody? No thanks. I'm gonna keep an extra 300 feet when I can. Sorry for the dirty windshield, I really should clean that. But, so I passed tasseled corn about two miles away and now I see a planter. I'm guessing he's replanting. Yeah, he's definitely replanting, but still. Different world. Now we're in a different part of the country here. Down in Southern Tennessee. Gonna be on my way home here shortly. And I am in Amish country. I wanted to take this ride home because uh, it's really, really, like really neat around here. I mean, there's so many different Amish, I don't know what you wanna call them, villages or, I'm not sure what the exact terminology is, but there's a lot of Amish families where, for those of you guys who don't know, Amish, I believe this is an Amish community, not a Mennonite. They dress similar, they are olden, they don't, they kind of reject technology. Amish are, you know, no power, no cell phones, no nothing, where Mennonite are a little bit more forgiving. I'm not sure of the exact details, but they don't live with the uh, nice and the modernness of the uh, today's world. So this area of the country is just, is neat. They all harvest all by hand, which I am hopefully we'll be able to see some uh, non-mechanized harvest basically some some wheat like right here they might come through and actually bait rake them up and put them into into stacks wheat stacks it's it's neat like here's an amish farm you can tell because they they just have giant gardens where they make a whole bunch of vegetables clothing furniture that's neat 
So we'll see what we see. And like they don't drive in vehicles at all, they only drive in horse-drawn carriages. So at night they hang a lantern out right on the left-hand side and those little uh, things right there are actually reflectors as they drive around. So that's the only type of technology they got as far as transportation goes. And that's, that's neat. That's a different lifestyle there. So I say they don't have power, but like right here, I noticed this, I was down here last year and I noticed this, like this is a sawmill or something and they definitely have power. I know for a fact they have power here. So I don't know what the whole story behind that is, but I know they can also irrigate. So I don't know, like I said, what all rules that, that they can and cannot do, but all I know is, like I said, they don't have vehicles. They, they reject a lot of modern technology. Like that kid looked like he was 14. And look, there's a giant sawmill. Hey, look at that. Yeah, so this, this area of the country is neat. It's cool. As much as I'm gawking like them, I bet they gawk just as much as the at the modern farming and agriculture equipment that is being used. And fun fact, there's also a large, I think the, somebody told me, probably, I think it's the U.S. The largest farmer's market, or at least Amish Mennonite backed farmer's market. So we're only an hour or so from Nashville. And essentially, apparently one of the, a bunch of the big, big wig restaurants in Nashville come down to this farmer's market to have, to buy some of these, you know, Amish raised produce and stuff to bring back to their fancy high-end restaurants in Nashville. Well, I'm just driving down the interstate, going someplace special tomorrow. Been there before, probably go there again. You guys will recognize it. See you guys in the morning. So it's the next day. I'm kind of making my way home, taking a slight looping detour. I'm sure you guys will recognize the place where I stop in. Well, that's not something you see every day. Whew, Lambo. Tell you what though, there's a sharp contrast as I'm going north in uh, Ohio here that they must have been wet and cool. And I don't know what the deal is, but they are not planted at all. Like, look at this, some of this stuff. It's like, uh, these fields are planted, but there's not emerged and it's a end of June. Like here's a soybean field that's decently far along, probably about where we are back home. Probably planted a month ago, but still, this field on the right looks like it just got planted. That's one thing I appreciate about my job. I, I, you know, I get to travel, see the country, and just see, you know, where different areas of the country are at as far as how far along they are progressing for planting progress, emerging, growing, just where they're at in the growing season. So it's, it's definitely kind of neat to see, you know, southern Tennessee, three, four, or five weeks ahead of us back home. But, you know, Ohio, especially the central part of Ohio, south central part of Ohio where I'm at right now, they're probably three weeks behind. And yet they got a wheat field that's about ready to cut. Huh. This place looks familiar. Huh. I feel like I'm lost. You guys recognize this place yet? Well, you probably tell them a thumbnail, but swung by Ohio, southern Ohio, southeast, eastern, uh, eastern edge of the Corn Belt, basically, to Brown Farms. Was here last fall. Coming actually well, about once a year, the last couple years I've came out here. You know, just on my way back from where I was traveling in Tennessee, just swung in. So we'll see what we can get into. It sounds like Brian's gonna finish planting today. They got the combines out. Wheat harvest is a little ways away. Tell you what, there's just something about these gray combines. They look sharp. So gleaners are definitely interesting. I mean, I've talked about them before, but they're a transverse rotor, not a normal rotor machine where it takes the full width of the feeder house and then runs it through a, a rotor that's going this way and then cleans it. Gleaner kind of takes it in the side of the feeder house, has a rotor going this way, and then spits it out the back. And then Kloss is completely different. It's like a hybrid where it's got a, it's a hybrid between a conventional machine, which is a cylinder that threshes and a walker that separates. This thing uses a cylinder that separates, which is the entire width of a feeder house. And then two rotors to uh, separate grain from the chaff and crap. But I tell you what though, that's a sharp looking machine. Anyway, let's steal Brian's rock sore. Ryan's got 20 acres of beans left to plant. And I'm just gonna ride along with him for a little bit. Like I said, I was just running through, rolling through this afternoon, figure I'd swing by, see what he's got going on. This thing's kinda handy. You said they would take, keep it under 90 because the drive shaft's about to fall out. Ah, 
always forget how narrow Brian's roads are. That give me the pucker factor of 9,000 driving this every day. I'm sure he's used to it, but man, he's he's as wide as the road. Can't imagine meeting a vehicle going 40. I was here last year when they picked corn in this field. This is actually the first field I ever drove a gleaner in. And it was actually, like I said, I was impressed with a class seven gleaner. It was kicking the crap out of our uh, baby class seven case. Go to that video right here. Yeah, this is a new toy since the last time I've been here. You know, I couldn't swing through Brown Farms and not take a look at this beast. I don't, I know nothing about bulldozers, but I know this is a D8. That's a 750C. So I would assume, you know, class seven, class eight. No, this is like twice the size of that. This thing is huge. Never would have guessed that. I mean, literally the track goes up to my shoulders and I'm not short, I'm 6'5". That is awesome. Should have came down here when uh, the Iowan farmer Ben came down to take a look at it. He actually got to run it. That's that's cool. I've never driven a bulldozer. I don't know if I'd trust myself. I've driven it on simulators before, but yeah, here's a 750 again, just to, for a comparison. My shoulder is, you know, it'd be your feet in the cab. Where up there, it's a good four feet taller. Oh, this thing is cool. So the wheat looks like a little bit green. It's probably a week out, I'd guess. There's definitely some green spots. Oh, that's man, that's probably a little more than a week out. Kind of see you still got the green hint. These wheat seeds are just finishing up. Or I should say the wheat plant. I travel all over the country, so I get to you know get the chance to go see and meet some people. That's how I met Brian four four years ago now. So he had to make a pit stop at home to grab some stuff. I just swung in and take out take a look at the wheat field. Won't be long until they're harvesting wheat. Now we're gonna go go right along and see if he can plant some soybeans. For some reason, this tree looks really familiar. Really, really familiar. You know, you know. Ha, huh. that one right there. Man, he wasn't kidding. This is a rough way to get up here. Well, that's kind of neat. I ordered the wrong Uber. Yeah. I think so. What a loss. My drone almost found this place though. Uh, yeah, time just flew by. He just finished his last bean field. What do you think about the new planter? Or cedar, or what are you calling it? I still call it a planter, it's an air cedar. It brings seed from a tank to the ground, that's all that matters. It's wider and quicker than our uh, 1255, 30 footer. Was your last one a 2150? We had a 2140 before we had a 1240. I'll tell you what though, this Challenger rides smooth and it's quiet. It almost looks like you're getting rain in the valley there. Yeah, hopefully it just starts getting some pop ups. That was fun to ride around in. He just seeded or planted or whatever you want to call it, his last bean field of the year. Oh yeah, that's definitely raining right there. Shoot, now I'm getting wet. It's starting to rain pretty good. Yeah, rain really good. This is dedication for you guys, trying to get some filming done. Or at least Brian said it, uh, at least he doesn't have the crack of hydraulic line to fold it. Work smarter, not harder. Stand underneath the, underneath the trees. I don't know about you guys, but one thing that makes me very upset, I don't know why, it just always has, raining when it's sunny out. made the mistake putting his windshield wiper on. I don't know if you could have timed this any better. Literally just fold it up as it's just downpouring. Ooh, Jeez, a lot of them. There's weed everywhere in this part of Ohio. Uh, it's gonna be cut here probably this weekend, next week. Wow. Let's get out of here and try not to break it. No promises though, because it is rough getting back here. I tell you what though, this rock sore is fun. Rain didn't last long, there was something. I'm gonna pick BJ up real quick. He's just dropping a tank of 28. Basically, that's the fertilizer that Bob is putting on. Here he comes right now. All those yellow, sh yellow and gray stuff. I don't know what to do with myself. Hey, no cracked windshield. I think that's a good day for BJ. <laughs> I can't say much. I don't have to. I mean, this is a heck of a grapple. It costs a lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can believe it. Hey, at least your hydraulic cylinders are protected. Well, they just got a good ring. We decided some good pizza, and now we're gonna go record a podcast. So hey, got to plant 20 acres soybeans with them, and we just hung around and went over to see George and just hung out. Well, that was fun. Just recorded my first ever podcast with Brian. You guys have to check it out. Be sure to check out the Working Words podcast. Now I'm gonna head to the hotel and head home tomorrow. Just about home. Man, it's been a long time and I can't wait. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I had a couple days back in Iowa before I actually head to Europe. It is Monday, July 4th right now. Happy Independence Day. I'm actually heading over to Europe tomorrow for the next 10 days. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, take it easy, and ta-ta for now.